Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to New and Old Survival. I appreciate you joining me today as today marks somewhere around the two month mark since I've put a video out. Actually just about for the whole month of January up to this point uh, either myself, my wife, my son, somebody has been sick and even behind me I just noticed that we are still working on the elderberry syrup that I made and uh, now my wife has found another use for elderberry syrup and instead of just taking it by itself alone as we do for an immune booster or uh, immunity booster and for cough now she likes to um, put this in a cup and add hot water and have some elderberry and honey tea hey whatever she likes right so anyway behind me I have 18 eggs I have one pound of sausage and I have a great value luncheon meat, 12 ounce can. Let's can up some breakfast. Stick around. I do want to say while this sausage finishes cooking up that the recipe that I saw, and I only saw it, I viewed it one time uh, last week, and I have searched YouTube, the internet, just under a Google search. I have looked and asked for help in certain canning groups on Facebook. And if they knew where I might find the recipe, just so I could you know, be able to get my portions correct and so on and so forth. And I have not heard any response from anyone. And again, I have not been able to locate the video. However, in the gentleman's video that I saw, and if anyone has seen this before watching mine, please leave it in the comments so I can give him credit for this recipe as I've never seen it anywhere else before. But he uses Jimmy Dean sausage and take note that I am halving the recipe because I've never tried it before. Um, so I thought instead of making, especially in the middle of, I'll try to put up a picture where I went to Walmart uh, two days ago that under the pork section, there was very, very little bacon, raw bacon. There was some pre-cooked, and that's fine to have on hand. I have some up behind me, but there's an egg shortage. So we have an egg shortage. Apparently there's a sausage shortage. Um, there was no cubed ham, which is what this was to be called for. So that's why I am using Spam, spiced ham. And uh, I'll be cutting that up and heating it up. I reckon to try to remove some of the oils out of it as I will be draining this sausage as well. So I wanted to explain myself and give a little bit background as we go through this video on the recipe. Now our sausage is done, I'll drain that and we will cut up the spam. All right, I have my sausage over here draining. Now, these are handy dandy spam slicer. I need it to stay down there, ta-da. And you can look and find these on the internet. Uh, just for sandwiches, for instance, it just makes really nice, even slices. So I thought that that would assist us in trying to get somewhat of some uh, even cubes. But if we don't, no biggie. Looks like I'm already messing it up, so there we go. After I get this sliced, put this in the pan and try to get some of that um, grease and oils. I forget the name of the natural byproduct, 
that where you make spam by yourself. It is called collagen. Is that right? Somebody let me know. All right. Again, having to do this because apparently shortages are just so flipping rampant right now. Always cut away from yourself. Not what I'm doing. Do what I say. Don't do as I do, right? All right. Now we've got that covered. All right. You can dice it up however you like. But I'm about done. Good enough. Let's get this in the pan. Now that the spam is all fried up, I'm trying to drain some of the grease off of that. And that's the only reason I could think of why the gentleman that I watched uh, cooked his ham. And again, I could not find ham. A lot of people saying they can't find milk. Uh, there's just a lot of shortages going on. And there's a lot of uh, ideas being thrown around as to why that is. I'll just leave it. So uh, now while this drains, we've already got our sausage drained in a pan. Once that drains, I'll be adding that, mixing it up. Now I have 18 dozen eggs to crack open. I'll bring you back. Now, here is our 18 eggs, not 18 dozen, thankfully. To that, I'm gonna add about four or five ounces of water. Again, I don't know why this is. It's just in the video that I saw. Yeah. Look at this. Woo! Oh yeah. This works very well if you got a, like a cup or a flat bottom bowl. This one's got a little ridge to it, but it'll still do fine. And uh, if you have one hand, this works extremely well. I'll get these mixed up, and we'll show you what how it all comes together here in just a minute. Now here's where it's about to get really interesting. I'm going to mix this sausage and ham up because this is the part where I don't really remember uh, if there was any ratios, if there was any certain uh, measurements given. And I know somebody's going to ask, can I double this recipe to put it in quarts? And if so, what would the time be? Unfortunately, I cannot give you that answer. As I've previously stated, this is the first time I'm doing it. I just wanted to get it on film, so if it works, it works, and uh, I'll let you know how that works, hopefully later tonight, when uh, we're going to try some of this, maybe for dinner. All right, sorry for the noise, back you out here, let me go, let me go, let me go get a cannon funnel, hold on. Okay, I've got four of using my standard tablespoon and I have some left over so I'm gonna put one more in each. One. Yeah. That one deserves more because it's special. Yeah, of course it is. And now I'm left over with that, and I could just eat that by myself. Now, let me make sure that you're in view, 
Yes, you are. We all know that if we are canned anything, that that bottom ring is about one inch. The instructions I saw was to make it about two inch whenever we fill our jars. And I don't know, but I just believe that we're gonna have too many eggs. I did use large eggs, but, and maybe the reason you add water is to make it a consistency that will, oh, I believe it'll be all right. That will pour easy and not be so gloppy, if that's a word. Y'all know what I'm talking about if you've ever tried to pour eggs out before. I'm going to try to go a little more conservative with this. There we go. It looks pretty. Purdy. It's got to be a southern word. P-U-R-D-Y. Well, I want you to know something. Uh-oh. That looked right about just perfect. Even use what I got left here. Oh boy, that I saw Mike on what he's talking about. Let's put me some more. I'm a meat and taters kind of guy anyway, so this ain't gonna hurt my feelings none. We got a little bit of extra sausage and ham in there. All right, I'm definitely saving what little bits in there to eat myself. Now, got our jars filled. We'll stick them in the canner. Be right back again. All right, now I'm gonna show you something. Uh, one thing I forgot to do before putting these in here was wipe my rims. And I made very, very sure that no vinegar got inside that jar, no excess. But anyway, wipe my rims, but I wanted to show you again. Right there is your one inch, and I'm not quite another one inch down below. But these will go in your canner using pint jars for 75 minutes. And start. All right. That's all we got for now. Until they're done. Now I got a load of dishes to get cleaned up. So we'll bring you back after they're finished when we're getting ready to open them up for a taste test. Here we go. All right. All right. Now. Well, I don't reckon I got anything to say. For the moment. I was about ready to do a closing statement, but we ain't done. Stick around. Now that we have our 75 minute uh, processing time in the electric pressure cooker, or pressure canner, excuse me, and I have allowed one hour to elapse past that so that the pressure has come down, you're gonna find out just, ouch, that's hot, just like I am, about how these things look so let's let's give her a go Ooh, man that's hot i smell the sausage how in the world are you supposed to get these things out of here is what i'm wondering there is not enough room and it's slick there's got to be a better way I know I can't touch them. Uh-oh, I might have one. Turn them sideways. All right, here we go. I'll try to bring you close without dropping this one. It filled that thing up. All right, now we can 
user. That was brand new out of the case. Lay that to the side. Of course, I was very gentle. I really hate to see that happen. I'll take a look and see what it looks like. All right. Now. Hey, I may have gotten really lucky. Let me see here. It did not break. I don't know how in the world that that one ring did not seal, but looky there. Intact jar. All right. I'm going to put this lid right back on there. And I'll know that we're going to use this one for the taste and consistency test. Ouch. Ouch. All right. All right. We'll let them cool. And I'll bring you back. Now, this is the finished product. We have some shredded cheese, salsa, sour cream, and a couple of spinach and herb tortillas. Just gonna dump this out of our jar, which is still warm. Look, slides right out. Put this over here. Uh, and try to turn this back into scrambled eggs. Chop it up. what the taste is like now keep in mind this is the first time that I have ever done this so a lot of people was going to ask how long will it store I do not know um, I will try to remember to keep everybody in the loop and uh, let them know whenever we try this to know how long it will store I'm going to guess for a minimum one year which I believe is wonderful especially if you have your own chickens and you're looking for something else to do with those eggs uh, that are laid in the springtime when they just go above and beyond or call of duty and, uh, all right so we're going to try to get this served up let you know how it tastes Recording yourself eating it. All right, I'm about to say, I'm recording. Precious Lord, we once again thank you for this day, for your love and your mercy, for your grace that's always been with us, Father. We pray, thank you for this food that we're about to receive. We pray that you would bless and sanctify it for the strength and nourishment, for the healing of our bodies. We ask in Jesus' name, Amen. Mm -hmm. All right, let's try this here recipe and no burrito is complete without hot sauce nothing is complete without hot sauce I saw that by the way <laughs> all right let's try it. there's an art to folding a burrito so that it doesn't fall out it's a monster burrito it is a monster burrito I'm going to have to do some calculations to figure out how many eggs, how many um, ounces of sausage and ham are in each jar, approximately. All right. Long try. No. First bite, I only got cheese and sour cream. A little bit. I 
not think it's good, by the way. Really? I really do. I think it's great. I put it up against anybody's breakfast burrito. Mm. I don't like the burrito. Well, it's too big. I'm glad I did not add any salt because spam and sausage that's quite a bit of salt. I was going to add some pepper flakes or cayenne but I figured because he don't like spicy food that I could add that later. So I'm glad I went that way. You did good. I think for a quick and easy breakfast that you can open up a can and heat up. Burritos last forever. These have been in the shelf for like a year. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> They're great. No, They're just big. <laughs> I would say that they've probably been in the bread. Uh, not bread basket, bread. What we put bread? Uh, container. The bread box. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would say for probably three months. Every bit of it, not molded. Yep. So it's yep. good. Burritos do last right. forever. Yeah. So that's good. Good stuff. Oh, this is like that.